all the different inscriptions in the SCBI. This means that what specific actions would you take to support the pursuit of free transport opportunities? Thank you, Evan. Uh, look, I've taken a similar approach in some instances by writing to the, uh, the then uh, Minister of Transport, North Coastal Affairs and Sanitation Contact in July last year. But um, my experience in dealing with ministers uh, normally do these things normally fall on their fears. But I basically outlined to her that if you do not get on board and subsidise TransLink, what you do is actually exacerbate the other issues that we've talked about previously, the social issues, the affordability issues. And if they don't deal with a subsidy, we're actually going to be paying a lot more as a nation or as a, as a state. And I outline that pretty clearly. And I think that goes back to what I'm saying about the sustainability as well. I've had various discussions with uh, private enterprise and uh, various stakeholders who may have input into what we call a PPP or the private public partnership. Um, and clearly we need to have acceptable solutions for everyone involved, both the Wine Creek and here on the island. But let me tell you, when the officer said, said to me it would take three years for us to put the paperwork together for an EOI, my response to that officer was, those businesses might have come and gone by then. You cannot expect a business, private enterprise, to wait three years or two years to come up with the framework for us to be able to work with. We have to cut through that you-know-what and make it happen. And there are ways of doing it. It happens in other parts of the state. It just takes a great deal of determination, knowing the right people, and making it happen. Can I just say, in line with transport, what's really been important, and I've been listening to you now for over 12 months, is the issue of parking near your transport. And let me just tell you what's really important about what I have done, and I believe, as a reflection for the people of the suburb of Bay Island, I have voted against every option that put forward paid parking to you on the on Wine Creek foreshore. And I've done that for a number of reasons. The first reason is that we were provided with a social and economic impact study that said it would partially affect a great percentage of you on these islands. Now, I have compassion and a heart for people who are struggling, and I've met many of them. So for that reason, that's one reason I could not support it. Secondly, governments should not be reducing a service and then charging you more for it. We are here to work for you and provide those services to a level that's sustainable, I agree. And you all have had paid parking at Lone Creek. The people who are in secure parking are happy with that. We shouldn't be playing around with ad hoc decisions now, spending $5 million on a band-aid solution which sees you driving in a shuttle bus with your groceries to a remote parking place yet to be advised and not even knowing
the Southern Walk Bay Islands and the islands community into line with the rest of South East Queensland. Because you aren't part of South East Queensland after all. <laughs> that Reverend Kitty as a whole will benefit two ways. We talked about sustainability. We talked about the fact that it cost us $10 million on the mainland to subsidise you, if that's how you want to put it. And if you start to make transport accessible, and the member's right, once you can deal with transport on the island, those perceptions will change, investment will come, and it will make it more sustainable. So we will in fact be saving money for the mainland if we start to address the transport needs. All right, now the other thing that is important about that is we will also then provide a service to our mainland, which frankly, after the last Translink um, changes, could well and truly be improved. So it's a win-win. We'll be saving money for the main mainland by making you more sustainable and we'll be actually giving them better services. So I say to you that if we contribute as a council to public transport and we don't do it, until you guys are absolutely in line with the rest of South East Queens, and I think that will give them some incentive to get their act together and stop the letter writing business and actually get some action happening. Yeah. 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 Yeah but on the condition that Sydney receive equal treatment for the rest of South East Queensland. So what I won't do now, because I think that's really important, because lots of promises can be made and we've seen that happen and they've been broken. Firstly, what I won't do is continue to support a temporary interim, which doesn't sound like it's interim anymore, a second, second best band-aid solution for Wyman Creek that, in my opinion, was adopted in a hurry for political expediency because this council had failed to meet its promises and during the course of this term, it realised that the term was almost up, the election was on its way, and so we had to do something, albeit that it wasn't really the best outcome for the residents, in my opinion, of Southern Bay Islands. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm an elected representative, I'm going to serve you, and it's my job to ensure that the people of the Bay Islands will be know what it's off for the current parking arrangements that they have at Wyoming Creek. And that's why I will pledge to you but on the condition, of course, that I have a supporting council, and that will be actually when the rest of the residents see on the 28th of April.